Just as the name Esther means hidden, so too is the hand of God hidden in her story. But if you look deeply, you shall find His hand in every scene, behind every event, and over every outcome. Thus, the story of Queen Esther. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, the king who reigned from India to Kush, over 127 provinces, that he sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the capital. And in the third year of his reign, made a feast for all his nobles and officials. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet. Well, <laughs> well, well now my friends and fine nobles, I should say I have a most darling little queen and I'm sure that she'd be willing to display her loveliness before you. Unix, Unix. Unix! Ah! My human. See to it that Queen Vashti comes here at once, wearing her royal crown, fully prepared to display her loveliness to me. And these delightful gentlemen, friends of mine, go. My friends are waiting, go! Hatak, Hatak, he wants Vashti. Oh no, has he been drinking? Is the world flat? <sighs> Enter. Queen Vashti, your presence is requested in the courts of His Majesty the King. How inebriated are they? Inebriated? Well, uh, His Majesty has earnestly requested that you come at once, wearing the royal crown and the royal jewel. I will not have it! I will not be traipsed around like some harlotin for these loathsome men to ogle and stare at. If the king wants me, he shall have me to himself in the privacy of his chambers. But I will not be displayed before these, these wretched noblemen. Besides, I have grown quite wary of men gawking at me in their drunken stupors. My queen, you do not know what you're saying. You risk your very life with your arrogance. Arrogance? My arrogance? <laughs> well, my friend, you don't know what arrogance is until you've dined with the king and his foolish companions for an hour, let alone an entire evening. I cannot believe that you would dare. Believe it. So and yes, I dare. I do dare. I will not be made anyone's display toy. Not in this way and not in any way. Not even for a king. Besides, I have my own banquet to return to. My ladies are waiting. 
Vashti, need I remind you, although we are your servants, you also are servant to the king. Very well then, I will not be held accountable for the consequences that shall befall you. You have disrespected your master. Master? Ha! Huh. What kind of a master is one who mortifies his queen for the sake of invoking lust in his foolish companions? I could have been everything to him. He wouldn't have it. Now he'll just have to be the one enduring humiliation this evening. What did she say? What do you think? May the gods help us. What? She said what? I don't believe it. How could she? She must have completely lost her mind. This is a vengeful assault on the very core of my character! I am outraged! How shall I proceed? I am outraged. How do I proceed with such a vile woman? Servants! Attend to me! I can rule from India to Kush. I can't control my own wife! Memukin, what must be done to Queen Vashti? She has not obeyed an order of the king. Queen Vashti has done wrong, not only against the king, but against all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. For the queen's conduct will be known to all the women, and they will despise their husbands and say, the king has commanded the queen to be brought before her, but she would not come. This very day, the Persian and Median women of the nobility who have heard of the queen's conduct will respond to the nobles in the same way. There will be no end to the disrespect and discord. Therefore, if it pleases the king, let him issue a royal decree and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Medea, so it cannot be repealed, that Vashti is to never again enter the king's presence. And let the king give her royal position to someone else who is better than she. Then, when your edict is pronounced throughout all your vast realm, all the women will respect their husbands from least to greatest. Yes. Good. Good. Brilliant idea, Memukin. Your wisdom exceeds that of all my nobles. The king and his nobles were pleased with this advice. So the king did as Mumukan proposed. He sent dispatches to all parts of the kingdom, to each province in its own script, and to each people in its own language, proclaiming in each people's tongue that every man should be ruler over his own household. Since it was customary for the king to consult with experts in matters of the law and justice, he spoke with the wise men who understood the times and were closest to him. A search will be made for beautiful young virgins. I shall appoint commissioners in every province of my realm to bring all of these girls into the harem at the citadel of Shushan. There they will be placed under the care of my eunuchs who are to be in charge of the women. Beauty treatment shall be given to them all, and the one that pleases me most shall be queen in place of Vashti. Now there was in the citadel of Shushan a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai, who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, who he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. This girl was also known as Esther. Esther was lovely in form and features, and Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother died.
Hadassah! Hadassah, where have you been? I have been waiting for hours. Oh, Father, I took the long way home today. But I never meant you to worry. Worry? I always worry about you. You're my Zahav. You are my treasure. You go to me as well, Abba, but... You know, in Olam Haba, Hashem will give us eternal freedom from worry. It's so hard not to worry about you. Next to Hashem and the mitzvot, you are my life. Very well, worry away. I, I don't know what to say. I always worry about nothing. Well, I'm afraid this time it is not about nothing. What is it, Father? What is it? Why are you so worried about me? You are so lovely and beautiful. I'm afraid they're going to take you away from me. They'll take me away? Yes. They? I mean, he. I'm afraid he is going to take you away from me. Who is he, Father? The king. The king? Yes. King Ahasuerus? Yes. <laughs> Why would the king want anything to do with me? I'm not the least bit regal in knowledge or appearance and... Why would he want anything to do with me? We haven't trespassed any law, have we? Wait, are we being punished because we are Jewish? Am I being punished? No, Hadassah, you haven't broken any laws. You're not being punished. You've done nothing wrong. You cannot tell anyone that you're Jewish from now on. Father, why ever not? You've always taught me to be proud to be Jewish and to never compromise the laws of Hashem or his mitzvot. And we're his Am Segula, his chosen ones. Why would revealing that be of any concern? I don't understand. It wouldn't be under normal situation. But I'm afraid this is not a normal situation. And I'm afraid I don't understand. It's the edict. What did it say? It's an order for the king's men to gather all the young maidens in the land and bring them to the citadel at Shushan at once. But uh, out of all the tens of thousands of maidens, I'm sure the king would never choose me. And if by some ounce of providence, I am the one chosen from the many, how would I go on never speaking of my ancestry and and you know it's every girl's dream amongst her culture to bear Messiah. Hashem would never see fit to bring Messiah through my loins if I married to a heathen king. Hadassah, the Mashiach is from the line of David. You are from the line of Benjamin. Oh, how do you know? The prophets tell us. And after all, I am a scribe. When is this going to happen? Immediately. But I understand it will be a year before you actually see the king. Some rubbish about beauty treatments and such. Not that you would ever need those. You are so beautiful the way you are. Oh, Father. What should I do in the meantime? Gather your belongings. Prepare to leave. The king's men will be here at dusk. But for now, let me pray over you before you leave. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha Ya'er Adonai panavalecha v'chonecha Isa Adonai panavalecha V'yasem lecha shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen. Mordecai, I've come for your daughter. <laughs> I was so disrespectful to my father before. May I go back and apologize? No time. Shema Israel, 
Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. I don't know why you're so upset. Most girls would appreciate this opportunity. I'm sorry. I just miss my father. I'm sorry. Hadassah, we never know where the Lord will lead us in life, but in all our ways we must acknowledge God. He will direct our paths. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Look to Him as you look to me, for He is your Heavenly Father, way greater than I. He will wrap His arms of love around you. He will rejoice over you with singing, as I do. He will quiet you with his love. I may not be with you much longer, Hadassah, but cousin Mordecai will love you too. He will be like a father to you. Reach out to the Lord when your heart is hurting. He will always be there for you, Hadassah. In your darkest night, he will never fail you. But the Lord will always be your light and your guide. I love you, Hadassah, and I always will. Ladies, good morning. Welcome to the royal courts. <laughs> when the king's order and edict had been proclaimed, many girls were brought to the citadel of Shushan and put under the care of the king's eunuch. Hatak. I need women, not children. See to it that the next selection are more mature. Before a girl's turn came to go into the king, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatments prescribed for the women, six months with oil of myrrh, and six with perfumes and cosmetics. And this is how she would go to the king. I had not meant that much off. Anything she wanted was given to her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. Hadassah, who also became known as Esther, was taken to the king's palace and entrusted to the eunuch who had charge of the harem. Esther had not revealed her nationality and family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do so. Every day he walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. Most beautiful. Esther, go to the balcony. The king would like to have a better look at you. Hatak will meet you out there. She was taken to King Ahasuerus in the royal residence in the 10th month of Tibet 
in the seventh year of his reign. Hello. Hello. And what's your name, young lady? Uh, Hadassah? Uh, I mean, Esther. Everybody back home calls me Hadassah, but... In the courts of your honor, I am Esther. Well, uh... Esther. Hadassah. What do you say you and I go for a little stroll? Very well. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women, and she won the favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. Well, my dear, you've made quite the impression. It's been a pleasure. You're a remarkable woman. Thank you. The pleasure's mine. It has been my humblest honor to sit in your presence and... Shh. Dine with me tonight. We'll have a royal feast. Anything you desire will, will be given to you. Just the two of us. Whatever His Majesty wishes. Thank you for joining me at the feast. Thank you. I hope you had a wonderful time. I did. It was a pleasure. Your eyes, I could get lost in them. I've been to the four corners of my kingdom and back around again. I've seen creatures of every kind and nature of every sort. Never have I seen anything compared to your beauty. Thank you. I spared no expense letting the light of day into every area of my kingdom. The palace. It's truly magnificent. Oh, this isn't my palace. Only my quarters. Glorious. Come. Esther. Yes? I want you. I want you to be my new queen. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. <laughs> you replace Vashti at once. I'll throw a royal feast, a royal wedding, and a banquet for all my fellow officials and noblemen, and I'll proclaim holiday throughout all the land. I'll assign to you, in addition to Hatak, a eunuch, both are good men. They bear the scars to attest to that. To their service to me. They will serve you excellently. Esther, you are my new queen. You have always been my king. But now, you shall become my, my husband. Oh God! Oh, God! I've been to my kid. Oh. I'm so scared. I'm trying to be 
be happy. Adasa, may you grow with a meek and gentle spirit and always, always seek the Lord. Though you may never dine in palaces of kings or stand in the presence of great ones, you will always have a place in God's heart and that shall be enough for you. <laughs> the king wants to marry me. Who am I? I'm a nobody, Lord. I love you. And you will serve and love your husband as he serves and loves the Lord. And what's more, he's a heathen. He's one of the Goyim, Lord. <laughs> we do not know who your Besharet is, but when you find him, the Lord will give you strength and peace to follow and to obey him all your days. Give me the strength to do your will, oh God. Give me the strength to do your will. <laughs> to accept this lot you have called me to with joy and grace and allow the heart of this king, my king, my husband, to one day know you as I do. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam shehechianu v'kiimanu v'higianu lazman hazeh Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has granted me life, sustained me, and brought me to this season. Amen. It's magnificent, isn't it? Indeed. I hope you're having a good time, my darling. It's more than I could have ever imagined. It is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Esther? Yes? I've fallen in love with you. As have I. Attention everyone! I proclaim a holiday throughout all the provinces in honor of my new queen, Queen Esther! Long live the king and his new queen, Esther. Now presenting your king and queen. Now it came to pass, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, became angry and conspired to assassinate the king. But Mordecai found out about the plot and told Queen Esther, who in turn reported it to the king, giving credit to Mordecai. And when the report was investigated and found to be true, the two officials were hanged on the gallows. All this was recorded in the presence of the king. After these events, the king honored a man named Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, elevating him and giving him a seat of honor higher than that of all the other nobles. All the royal officials at the king's gate knelt down and paid honor to Haman, for the king had commanded this concerning him. But Mordecai would not bow down or pay him honor. Why do you disobey the king's commands day after day? You know we have all been instructed to bow before Haman, 
and you are the only one who remains in disobedience. I cannot and will not bow before mere mortal men. I am a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin. I will only bow before the God of Israel and someday before the Mashiach. Very well. Just know you have been warned, Mordecai. You may pay the price with your life. When Haman saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor, he was enraged. Sire, your request. Your Majesty, this is despicable. Mordecai, your servant who paces back and forth incessantly at the gates, refuses to bow before me. Oh my. Your Majesty, you have placed me above all nobles in your kingdom. You have commanded that all should bow before me, and this, this vile Jew refuses to. Despicable. And what's more, he claims that all Jews should refuse to bow. He calls them his people in your provinces. Some rubbish about only bowing before a, a heavenly God. Deplorable. Yes, it is obvious that these people do not follow your laws or decrees. They have such unusual customs it is really no longer in your best interest to tolerate them. Amon, what is it exactly that you're saying we do to these, uh, these people, the Jews? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've thought about this already, actually. The only punishment fitting those who would dare such practices against your throne is utter annihilation. If it pleases the king, let a decree be sent out to destroy all the Jews. I will even put 10,000 talents of silver into the royal treasury for the men who carry out such business. Very well. Keep the money, do as you wish to the people, and send out the decree. Yes, Your Majesty. Then on the thirteenth day of the first month, the royal secretaries were summoned. They wrote out in the script of each province and in the language of each people all Haman's orders to the king's satraps. These were written in the name of the king and sealed with his own ring. Dispatches were sent by couriers to all the king's provinces with the order to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the Jews, young and old, women and little children, on a single day, a copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province and made known to the people of every nationality so they would be ready for that day. The city of Shushan was bewildered. You may enter. Now speak with the queen, please. Oh, yes. Um, do I Please. Thank you. What is it? Mordecai is continually carrying on with such grief, dressed in sackcloth, outside the fortress gates. Mordecai? What is the matter? Mordecai's anguish is the result of devastating news he's heard regarding his people, the Jews. The Jews? Yes. There's been an edict proclaiming that all Jews be annihilated. An edict from the king? Yes. Annihilated? What, whatever for? What have they done? The question is, what haven't they done? They refused to bow down to the king's head noble, Haman. And they also refused to pay proper respect to the king's laws. Mordecai had asked me to give this to you. It is a copy of the edict that was sent forth throughout all Shushan. You know, 
The Jews can only bow before the one true living God of Israel. Unless Haman is Moshiach, they cannot bow. He's only a mere mortal, just like you or I. I'm afraid I don't understand. Would you have it that others in the province dare disobey the king's commands? No. Oh, somehow I doubt my king was behind this. That is correct. It was Haman, wasn't it? Yes. Although he does have the king's signet ring. But why are you so upset? You have nothing to do with these people. Uzrua Adonai Ali Mi Niglata. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him as a tender shoot. Like a root out of dry ground, he had no form, no comeliness that we should desire him, nothing to attract us to him. My queen, what are you saying? He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and familiar with grief and suffering. We, as it were, hid our faces from him. But he was pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought us peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, each one to his own way, but the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. The Lord has laid the iniquity upon Haman of us all? No, not Haman. Don't you get it? That's the whole point. The Lord has laid upon Moshiach the iniquity of us all, and Haman is no more Moshiach than any mortal. Don't you get it? That's the whole point. Unless Haman is Mashiach, Messiah, the one to come, who bore the sin of many, the Jews cannot bow. They will not bow. I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm speaking of a forthcoming Messiah that the great prophet Isaiah foretold of. I'm quoting him. I'm quoting Isaiah. He's speaking of a Messiah who will come to redeem his people, the Jews. The Jews? Yes, but that's not all. It isn't? No. Isaiah was foretelling this man, a divine man really, will not only bring redemption and life to the Jewish people, but also salvation and eternal life to that of the whole world for those who believe. It's actually quite simple. Until the Jews see this arm of the Lord, Uzurua Adonai, fulfill these and other prophecies, they will not believe, they will not bow, they cannot bow. What are you saying? Well, Haman is not Moshiach, therefore the Jew cannot bow. Abba, Abba, I come to you, I am proud of you so much for all the things you did to me, Abba. I am proud of you for your good lives that you gave me, Abba. You seem to know so much about these people, the Jews. Oh, I've known many among the provinces who are of this culture. Are you? You are. You're one of them, aren't you? Now I believe I understand you completely, how you must feel. Have you told anyone this? Have you told the king? No. No, the time hadn't come yet. It very well may be near. I am now waiting for you and I am looking for you. I am asking you to do the best of my This Savior, this Messiah, he must be very grand. He is. Well, he will be. We don't know who he is quite yet, but we do know that 
he will be extraordinarily humble. A bruised reed he shall not break. A smoldering wick he shall not snuff out. He shall be a covenant to the people and a light to the Gentile. He shall open the eyes of the blind, free captives from prisons. Much in the way in the days of Moshe, the serpent was lifted up and all who gazed upon him with faith in their hearts were saved. Mashiach too shall be lifted up and those gazing upon him with true faith shall have life as well. Although this time it shall be life eternal. Well, this uh, Messiah, as you call him, when he does come, he will come for the Gentiles as well. So this means that I may know him as well as you do? That is correct. You and I both may know him and What's more is he's come for both the Jew and the non-Jew. We shall all know him from the least to the greatest. Messiah will come for the lowliest of peasants all throughout the provinces to the highest in the king's courts. From the least to the greatest, Messiah will come. And before him, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess he is Lord. I now believe I understand my queen. What would you have me do now? Go, send Mordecai this message. All the king's officials and people of the royal provinces know that any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned has but one law, that he be put to death. The only exception to this is for the king to extend the gold scepter but I'm afraid it has been 30 days since the king has called me. Yes, my queen. Atok has another message from Mordecai. He wants you to go into the king's presence and beg for mercy and plead with him for his people, for your people. Do not think that because you are in the king's house that you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's household will perish. And who knows but that you have come to this royal position for such a time as this. Send Mordecai this message. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Shushan and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king even though it is against the law. And if I perish... Then I perish. to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. And I long to dwell in your tents forever. I take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Selah.
Lord, touch the heart of my maidens, that they might pray with me and truly believe. Maidens, I have summoned you together for such a time as this, because my people and I are in grave danger. I've asked you to wear sackcloth and mourning clothes for me, because I know the one true living God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. He is the true God, and he is one God. And I'm asking that you would all pray and fast for me, not eating or drinking for three days, night or day, and come before the true living God to ask him for favor upon me as I go before my king, so he should extend the gold scepter to me and grant me life and spare my people. Will you agree in prayer with me and pray to the living God of Israel? Amen. Will you pray with me? Please pray with me. Oh God. Oh Father. Avinu Malkeinu. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You are the one true living God, and we call upon you right now. Save my people, please, God.
Hadassah, beauty is power. Beauty is fleeting, and charm is deceptive. But I love Hashem, the Lord, and I pray He grant me favor. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and He shall move it whithersoever He may. I just pray the Lord move upon the heart of my king. As channels of rushing water, the Lord move it to my favor. Amen. He will, my queen. He already has. How is it possible for it to have taken so long and so many days to take the pass of Thermopylae? I, I, I mean, How many men opposed us? Tell me. 300 men against all of our Persian armies. This is outrageous. It cannot be tolerated. This is the extension of my reign in my kingdom and I won't have for it! My queen. It is I. Esther. Come. I've missed you. As have I. <laughs> I've been occupied. I... I wanted to call. I... It's a pleasure. The pleasure is mine. I'm sure you've come with a request. What is it? It will grant it to you. Even up to half the kingdom it will be yours. If it pleases the king, let him, together with Haman, Come to a banquet I have prepared for you today. We will do as Esther asks. Summon Haman at once. Yes, sir. Thank you. Come. Yes. Now what is your petition? It will be yours. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted to you. My petition and my request is this. If the king regards me with favor, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, let the king come tomorrow with Haman to another banquet I shall prepare for the two of you, and then I will answer the king's question. Very well. Thank you. <laughs> and that's not all. I am the only person that Queen Esther invited to a banquet that she gave for the king. And she's invited me to join them again tomorrow. But all of this gives me no satisfaction as long as I see that Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. Come on, I've got a brilliant idea. What is it, my love? Have gallows built, 75 feet high. Ask the king in the morning to have Mordecai hanged on it. Then, go with the king to the dinner and be happy. Yes. That is yes. wonderful, mother. We should exterminate all of them. Yes. Yes! Those awful Jews with their strange customs and worship to an invisible god. They must die a thousand deaths! Yeah. Yes! I agree! There is no greater favor we can do to the provinces and the world than to rid ourselves of those Jews who keep after customs of an imaginary <laughs> god whom they ridiculously call God of all. As if there was only one god. Yes, what a marvelous idea. Not only Mordecai, but all the Jews need to be exterminated immediately. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Kill yeah. them all. Them Jews. Kill them all. If we eliminate the Jews, we eliminate their invisible God. <laughs> I will speak to my servants at once and have them build gallows. And then I will talk to the king and tell him about our marvelous little plan. Yes. My <laughs> <sighs> 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 Mabuken! Read me the records of my reign. Yes, sir. Just, uh, just start anywhere. It is recorded here that Mordecai has exposed Bigthana and Teresh. Two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, who had uh, conspired to assassinate the king. What honor and recognition has Mordecai received for this? Nothing has been done for him. Who's in the courts? Haman. Haman is standing at the courts. He seems particularly happy about something. Send him on in here. Yes, sir. Amon? Yes, Your Majesty. What must be done for the man the king delights to honor? For the man the king delights to honor. Let them take royal robes that the king has worn. And and a royal horse that the king has ridden with a royal crest placed upon its head. Let the robe and the horse be entrusted to one of the king's most noble princes. Then let them robe the man the king delights to honor and lead him through the city streets, declaring this is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Go at once, gather the robes and the horse, and do just as you have suggested. For Mordecai, the Jew who stands at the king's gates. Oh, and Haman, don't neglect anything that you have mentioned. Yes, Your Majesty, as you wish. This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Since Mordecai, before whom your downfall has started, is of the Jewish origin, you cannot go against him. He will surely come to ruin. Don't you think I know this? I've all but given up my... We are Queen Esther's royal attendants. Your presence wanted at the banquet immediately. Tell me, my queen, what is your petition? It will be given to you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be yours. If I have found favor in your sight, and if it pleases your majesty, Spare my life, this is my petition, and save my people, this is my request. For if I and my people had merely been sold as male and female slaves, no such distress would justify disturbing your majesty, but we have been sold for destruction and slaughter and annihilation. Destruction? Yes. Tell me. Where is the man that would do such a thing to your people? Tell me. 
It is him. It is this vile Haman. Oh, this is a mistake. I would never plot against my queen. I, your majesty, I'm your most humble servant. I... No, your majesty. No, this is... This is a mistake. My queen, I would never, I didn't know, I, you oh, knew. Please. no, you knew, I, no, yes you did, oh, queen, no, no, don't do this, it won't help you, no, please, queen, he'll even molest the queen in my own palace, no. servants, no, a gallows, 75 feet high, stands by Haman's house, he made it for Mordecai, who spoke up to help the king, Hang him on it! No! So mercy, please! No! No! Please spare me! Please! Spare me! Mercy! Mercy! Those Jews! He who blesses Israel shall be blessed. He who curses Israel shall be cursed. I'm so sorry, my precious. Precious queen. Thank you. I love you. I would never stand for anyone hurting you or your family. Oh, Father! Father! Oh, so good to see you. Oh, King Ahasuerus. This is my father, my cousin, really. He's raised me since I was a child, and has taught me all I know about Hashem and his ways, and he has fought valiantly to save your life, and he... I'm well aware of what he's done for me. You, sir, I'm in your debt. You have raised a magnificent woman as a daughter. Few can compare. Indeed. None can compare. My signet ring. You shall be my right-hand man. That which the enemy meant for evil, your God has changed to good. <laughs> what is it? I'm sorry. I know you've done so much already, and I, I hate to be a father, but if it pleases the king and he has regarded me with favor, if you could see fit to overrule the edict, of Haman to destroy the Jews and send dispatches out to reverse the edict. And please, let his sons be hanged on the gallows. And... Attendant. Because Haman has attacked the Jews, I have given his estate to Esther and her kin. An edict will be written by the scribes as they best deem fit and it will cause Haman's family to be hanged in the same manner as him. Use my signet ring, because anything written with the approval of the king is stamped with this ring and cannot be revoked. Go at once. Yes, sir. Now Mordecai recorded all these events and sent letters to all the Jews to have them celebrate annually the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar, the month when their sorrow was turned into joy and their mourning into a day of celebration. The king's edict granted the Jews in every city the right to destroy, kill, and annihilate any armed forces that might attack them. For Haman, the enemy of the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to destroy them and had cast poor, that is, the lot, for their destruction. But the destruction came back upon his own head. Therefore, these days were called Purim, and the Jews took it upon themselves to establish the custom that they and their descendants and all who joined them should, without fail, observe these two days every year.
Thank you. Thank you for everything. You're my queen. I'm your king. There will always be a king greater than you, though. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God and the Prince of Peace. And he shall reign on the throne of David forever. Forever is a long time to reign. It is, but forever is fitting for the King of the Universe. I understand now. In your heart, you have placed a king above me, which is a god. No. In my heart, I have given all I am to a king who is God. And I only pray one day you truly know him as your king as well. Let me pray for you. Oh God, you have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then I will ever praise your name and fulfill my vows day after day. Amen. Amen. Oh, Akash Feroz. Look at our people rejoicing on this day that commemorates the day you set us free. Look at them, they're so happy. The Jews rejoicing. And I am too in my heart, I am. Why don't we join them? Wait, let us get my baby. <gasps> baby! Darling, come here, come to mommy and daddy. <laughs> you are so special. Hello, sweetheart. Today is a very special day for your parents and you. Yes, it is. Father, father, would you hold the child while we go rejoice with our people? No, really, it's 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 too much. Please, for me. All right. That's wonderful. All right. Okay. Let us go. Hmm. Look at the joyful celebration. Years from now, when you are older, you will tell the story of how a God-fearing woman melted the heart of an angry king and how the hand of Hashem caused victory for the Jewish people, your people. These days should be remembered and observed in every generation by every family and every city. And these days of Purim shall never cease to be celebrated by the Jews, nor should the memory of them die out among their descendants. Just as the name Esther means hidden, so too was the hand of God hidden in her story. If you looked deeply, you would have found His hand in every scene, behind every event, and over every outcome. Thus, the story of Queen Esther.
Shalom Aleichem and blessings to you in the Lord. We are glad that you watched our film for such a time, A Story of a Queen and Her King. We hope you enjoyed it. And we just wanted to share a few final words with you. As I'm sure some of you may have been confused to see some imagery, especially at the end there of the uh, hand of Jesus closing the Bible, otherwise known as Yeshua. I am a Jewish woman. I have been raised Jewish and for 20 years all I knew was Judaism and I didn't understand who Jesus was, Yeshua, and I only knew that he was the false god of the Gentiles, the nations, and um, somebody shared the message of God's love with me through Yeshua and shared that all throughout Jewish prophecy, all throughout the Tanakh, the Torah, the Nevi'im, and the Ketuvim, there are prophecies of a forthcoming Messiah who would come to redeem the Jewish people, and as a nation, they would collectively reject this one. And I have now come to learn that that one was Yeshua, the one spoken of in Isaiah 53, the one spoken of in Isaiah 51 and 52, the arm of the Lord, Uzeruah Adonai, who would redeem the Jewish people and eventually the nations because he was the one sent from God to be our savior. And I only pray that you also would open your heart, whether you're a Jew or non-Jew like Jeffrey, would open your heart and pray to see if he is the one for you because I believe he sent for all of us. We may not all be as fortunate as Elisa was to have a supernatural experience. However, supernatural experience is not a prerequisite to coming to know God or his son. Let no one be ashamed of sharing the message, the good news, the gospel. I can only speak from the non-Jewish side. But if you have a Jewish friend, a relative, don't hesitate. Because it's the Messiah of the world for everyone. When he came, he didn't take anything away from the Jews. He only extended out what was with them to all. The most anti-Semitic thing you could do to a Jewish person is not to share the message of their Messiah. We thank you for listening, and we thank you for watching. God bless, and Baruch Hashem.